slow down. Her voice echoes in my ears from somewhere far away, distorted by my pounding heart and the sound of shrieking metal. I taste copper until it overruns my senses. The pressure in my head builds as the turn signal comes into focus. The green burns my eyes, imprinting itself into my retinas as I search the dashboard like it has answers to what happened, to where I am. The check engine light is a menacing red. Green flashes over it with the beat of my heart until I force myself to blink. It's sluggish, difficult, like my eyelids are fighting me. But the green light clears from my vision, and so does the red as I look at the front windshield. It's spiderwebbed, fractured, blown out in places, and the yellow lines of the road ahead look strange with the dying flickers of my headlights. Why is the world wrong? Why are the darkened trees hanging from the sky? Slow down! Her piercing echo lances through my brain like a memory, twitching my head with pain, and I smell something burning. Is it the car? I take another breath through my nose, and blood threatens to choke me as it bubbles up. My vision blurs in and out. Samantha, I think but can't speak. My lips refuse to cooperate. The blood runs from my nose, down my forehead, and drips onto my hands, crumpled against the ceiling below me. The burning smell intensifies, making my eyes water and my confusion grow. My nose has to be broken. How can I smell anything? I try to lift my arms to pull the choking seatbelt away from my chest so I can breathe easier, and it refuses to move from the ceiling. Noah. Samantha's voice breaks through the growing pressure in my skull, but she sounds like she's underwater, and I turn my eyes to her. Her empty stare greets me, the white of her left eye filled with dark red. How stunning is the blue now? My brain asks in wonder as my mind starts to float in the sea her voice did. Her lips are parted, and her jaw is inhumanely slack as her head hangs at a strange angle from her neck. Noah. I hear her voice again, but her mouth doesn't move. The turn signal comes back into focus, and now I hear it's punctuated by the steady dripping of the blood puddling under my wife's crimson streaked blonde hair, running from the gash split across her temple and forehead. Samantha! Her name is the scream in my mind now, but it only comes out of my mouth as a gurgle as another sharp twinge rocks my head swinging me slightly in the cradle of my seatbelt with the tempo of my pounding heart. I swear I can see her distorted mouth smile as my vision darkens around the edges. Slow down! She screams as tires squeal. Noah! She's angry again. It isn't just her tone, but how her lips narrow into a disappointed line. I can see the wrinkles on her face in all the wrong places. When did she age, I think, leaning back in my favorite chair, banished to the garage for the sake of a baby's room. The springs creaking beneath me are comforting, maybe because I can tell they annoy her. Are you even listening to me? Her question is punctuated by a crack of thunder outside. I wasn't. Of course, you want me to, uh, get the textured floor paint for the garage so you guys don't risk breaking your necks every time it rains, Richard suggests as he sits forward in his chair, resting his beer on his knee and his elbows on his thighs. I glance at my supposed business partner, arching a brow, and he shrugs with a half-cocked smile. Thank you, Richard, Sam says, and I suppress my snort as she heads into the house, not giving me another glance. Yeah, thanks, Dick. Someone has to be a good husband around here, seeing as you're not up to the task. He sits back in the folding chair, watching after Sam, then turns his dark brown eyes to me. I used to tell him they were blue before he talked so much shit that it made them brown. The rain pours harder, beating against the metal door of the garage, a sound I typically find comforting. Today it makes me feel strange, like my heart is struggling to keep tempo with the drops. It's something every day, without fail. I rub my hand over my face in an effort to wipe away my tension. It doesn't work. 
Yesterday she was upset because I didn't check the front porch when I got home. And some Amazon package pirate treated themselves to a pair of yoga pants with an extra stretchy band. Didn't I tell you to get a doorbell cam? Richard spins his bottle against his jeans, then balances it precariously on his knee. I did, I smile wryly. But the porch pirate took that too. <laughs> Richard laughs, shaking his head. No wonder she's always mad at you. You're not funny. I'm hilarious. I stand long enough to grab another beer from the mini fridge on my dust-covered workbench. When I flop back into my seat, my annoyance drains as I think about the package and her blue eyes filled with angry tears. But it's not that. It's... I shrug, a lump lodging in my throat, forcing me to clear it. The baby thing again? I nod, turning my eyes to the floor, watching the rainwater drip thickly from the car's underside into a dark, growing puddle, shaded red from the sensor at the base of the garage door. She wasn't wrong about the paint. First trimester loss. It wasn't even viable. I don't understand. I know I don't. So I leave it alone as much as possible. It doesn't matter anyway. Talk, don't talk. She looks at me like I'm the one who caused it, no matter what I choose. Still a life to her. Richard's tone is sympathetic. You're trying again though, yeah? She wants us to, but I don't know, man. I know it sounds callous, and I swear I'm not trying to be, but I feel like she's gone a little off the deep end. Glancing back at him, I try to gauge his response and see a vague curiosity there instead of revulsion at my possible lack of humanity. So I continue. Extra stretchy band for her yoga pants? She's not even pregnant yet. She goes out and buys stuff we don't need. And if it were one or two things, I'd think maybe she's grieving. But it's hundreds of dollars every week. Baby clothes, shoes. I've got a closet full of diapers for a child that doesn't exist. I wish my mother, or hell, her mother was around so I had someone with some possible experience to talk to about this. Instead, there's Richard. Sure. We've known each other for nearly a decade, but talking to another man about this makes me feel odd in my own skin. I shift in my seat, tugging at the collar of my shirt to try to relieve the feeling. All right, I'll give it to you. That's a little concerning. Richard pushes his hand through his dark hair, graying at the temples prematurely. Have you talked to her about it? Are you fucking kidding me, Noah? You're judging me for wanting to be prepared this time? Her furious scream was punctuated by the shattering glass in her hand. A crack of thunder drags me from the memory. No, I lied. Hell no, because it isn't just that. Sometimes I catch her in the nursery talking to herself. And what am I supposed to say? Sorry, honey. I know you're going through a rough time being haunted by your ghost fetus, but I need you to check back into this reality so we can figure some shit out. Jesus Christ, Noah. Richard pops off his bottle cap against the aluminum arm of the chair, causing my back teeth to hurt from the sound of metal scraping against metal. No, don't say that to her. I wasn't serious. See? You're not funny, he counters. Maybe she's pregnant and hasn't told you yet. Maybe she wants to wait to tell you? His suggestion would make sense if I'd had sex with her at all since the loss. But she was so insistent scheduling the days we should do it, that it withered my drive. Shh, it's okay, baby. We'll be together soon. I can hear her whisper in the dark of the nursery, her hand on her stomach as she paces in front of the window, her long blonde hair covering her face. I take another drink of my beer to clear the memory. Yeah, I shrug my shoulders. Maybe. Silence overtakes us and I restrain myself from sticking my finger in my ear as a high-pitched ringing takes over. I flick my bottle cap at him after a moment, trying to break the tension. Why'd you come anyway? Can I have a beer with my friend? He pulls his pocket knife out, fidgeting with it. No, you've not had a beer with me for no reason since my mother died five months ago. Oh shit, wait, that's a reason. My bad. He gives me a deadpan look then takes a swig from his beer, clicking his tongue. I wanted to talk about work, 
His voice is even, calm, but my throat tightens up in defense automatically, making me sit straighter in my favorite chair. Let's talk about work, at work, I suggest. Noah, for fuck's sake, I'd love to, but getting you to answer your phone, an email, a text, a message by Al even, is impossible. I don't like being interrupted, I start, but he's already shaking his head. We're going to go under if you don't get your shit together, and you won't talk to me. Christ, do you take nagging lessons from Samantha? I snap, putting my beer down hard on the concrete beside my chair. You're in charge of the financials, Richard. Stay in your lane. The garage door creaks open, and I look at Samantha as she pokes her head out. Her empty gaze cuts from me and warms as it lands on Richard. You staying for dinner? She asks, hopefully. What? Does she need a buffer to deal with me? No. Richard stands with an apologetic smile toward her. Gotta get home. Have some things to take care of. He glances at me, his temper showing like strain at the edges of his eyes, and I struggle against the surge of guilt. Can I walk you out? I offer, and he shakes his head. Just stay in your lane. He walks out, and a flash of lightning illuminates the garage before the door closes behind him. Jesus, Noah, can't you stay in your lane? Samantha's irritated voice pulls me from the dark as agitation swells in my chest. Half a tire touching the yellow line isn't a big deal. She's just fishing for reasons to dig at me, and I struggle not to rise to the bait. I shift to look at her, to part my lips to speak, but I can't move as the inky spots bleed from my vision, giving way to the reflective yellow line stretched out above my head. Caution, do not cross, it warns, and unease settles into my bones. Well, shit, I crossed it after all. Go ahead, officer, take me in. My wife will love it. My cheek twitches as I try to chuckle to ease my growing anxiety, and the only sound I make is the gurgling wheeze of my breath. I watch the world blur as understanding creeps into my mind. I'm in the car. Was there an accident? Slow down! Samantha. Oh God, Sam, is she okay? I try to turn my head to look at the passenger seat and can't, and terror seizes my throat, choking me. No, no, I can't panic. That's not how you get out of this kind of situation. That's not how we survive. The clicking of the turn signal has slowed. It's sluggish now, and the pressure in my skull from hanging upside down makes me feel like it's caught in a vice grip. But that's not right. It's throbbing, rocking my body subtly in a mocking way. My blood can move me, but my thoughts shrivel away as my eyes fall to the dashboard. The check battery light has joined the engine light, and the turn signal is duller as it flashes. I claw through the fog in my brain, digging for reason. That's why my headlights aren't flickering anymore. But what's illuminating the double yellow line? A flash of white drags across my pupils, leaving an ache behind like ice picks have been shoved through my retinas, and I internally groan as bright spots dance in my vision. It's headlights, I'm sure it is, and nausea rolls in my empty stomach as adrenaline floods my system. I just need to push through. Help will be here. Maybe it already is. I lift my eyes to the road, and another quick flash blinds me before fading. Not headlights, a headlight. It's strobing intermittently on the other side of the road, but the car looks strange. It's crumpled, I think, and an orange glow emanating from the back is growing. It's illuminating the tree the car is wrapped around. The long shadow reaches out for us, crawling across the pavement with that expanding glow. I'm frozen staring at it until a scream pierces the night and drags my eyes back to the flickering light. Help me! The woman's voice is terror incarnate, come to life from a nightmare, and it runs my blood cold and slows my heart into thick pounding beats I can feel in my sinuses. Was it Samantha? The sound of glass popping is distant. The hiss of bubbling heat and sobbing is no match for the relief that floods me. The glow shifts to flames, and I swear I can feel their blissful warmth on my face. Thank God for the fire, for the light. 
there was something comforting about it. The flames lick at the tree's lower branches, wiping out that haunting shadow as it overtakes the dark, and I can see the woman's outline as clear as day. I can't hear what she's saying over the growing ringing in my ears, but I can hear her shrieks, and I can see her body thrash as she fights the light. It's so warm, Sam. Let's give in. Just give in. Her hair catches in a bright flash, scorched away instantly as she writhes, and her skin peels from her face. I drift in the comforting warmth. I watch the blood bubble out from the flesh, the sizzle of the steak on the grill making my empty stomach give a pinch. I'm telling you, Noah, it's too hot. Samantha's arms wrap around my shoulders from behind, her long blonde hair tickling my face in the evening's breeze. It'll have a nice char, I argue. Burnt to a crisp, she whispers, <laughs> her lips brushing the shell of my ear. Flavorful, I roll my eyes, trying to be good-natured. We're trying. Normal couple, normal life, normal dinner with friends. Friend. Hers couldn't make it, but Richard always seems to jump on an opportunity to come over since that stormy night. He wants me to see him. I can't ignore what's in front of my face. Why don't you let me take over? You can have a beer with Richard. I can be the head griller. Her arms tighten around my shoulders, and I struggle not to shrug her off. But it's hard to breathe with the heat in my face and with her sudden, vice-like grip. Your hair will catch, I shift, stepping back just enough to push her away without making it seem like that's my intent. And she releases me. Wait, don't let go. The intrusive thought is startling, and I turn to face her. Red streaks down her beautiful blonde hair, and my heart beats harder as she looks up at me. I'll tie it back. She pushes her fingers through it, smearing the streak as she pulls it into a high ponytail. I flick my gaze to her forehead, looking for the cause of the red, but her skin is flawless and beautiful. I try to roll the pressure from my shoulders. Ah, shit. Seriously? Ketchup? Her curse brings my eyes back to hers just before she looks away and grabs the grill towel, wiping off the side of her hand. Is it in my hair? No, I lie, and her grin, so rare, so fucking beautiful, flashes to life on her face, lighting up those blue eyes. Liar. It's a statement. I can't help but grin back as she leans closer, and I feel it, that pull of tension in my stomach, the spark of heat in my heart. What's a statement? Richard voice has her lips pausing right before they meet mine, and she turns that smile to him. The surge of irritation is instant at the intrusion, and jealousy twists with it. How often does she show him that expression? Does she show him others? I push the thought away with a slight shake of my head. I fancied up the baked beans and my hair, apparently. Do you like it? Sam does a small twirl and Richard's eyes meet mine over her shoulder. It's more Noah's taste than mine, I think. Her hand pushes against his chest, drawing his attention. Come on, I know what you like. Does she? Do you? He asks with that half-cocked smile on his face, and I turn back to the grill, the heat, a sudden pressure pushing against the back of my eyes. I lift the grill spatula up, and my arm uselessly falls back down to my side. What the hell? I try again, and my arm doesn't move. The pressure behind my eyes grows until the light of the fire creates starbursts in my vision. Did you hear me? Sam's voice asks from far away as my breath catches in my chest, pain blooming across my ribcage. Hey, Noah? She tugs on my immobile arm, and I blink rapidly, clearing my vision. I lift the spatula like I never had a problem. I said I got it, babe. Yeah. I concede, stepping back. I'll get you a beer, head griller. My offer seems to slow time. Her fingers wrap around the spatula and then simply freeze instead of taking it from me. I glance down as she raises her left hand on instinct, pressing it against her lower stomach. I see it then, the flash of fear in her eyes, the way her lips part in hesitation. I'll pass on the beer. I've got that blood work in the morning and... She says in a rush, and I cut her off. And we're trying for a baby, so you don't want to risk anything. I finish for her instead, and her eyes tear up as she gives me a watery, grateful smile. Yes. 
Yes, she's happy because I'm finally agreeing. She's happy because she wants us to be a family. The relief that floods me is instant, and she steps forward, releasing the spatula to wrap her arms around me instead, blocking the heat from the grill. Her body is cold as I run my hands up her back, and her hair is sticky as I press my cheek to the side of her head. Cute, Richard says, and I look over at him leaning against the sliding glass door. It's spider-webbed crack at his back, broken through in some places. He's flipping a pocket knife in his hand, and his lower face is distorted. Jaw slack in an inhuman way, and I squeeze my eyes closed tightly. I can't ignore what's in front of my face. Bile leaks from my mouth as I choke, running into my left eye with a burning pain that brings me back to the car devoid of all light except for the faint outline of the red battery symbol. The flames are out down the road, and the air is frigid now. My body quakes with subtle tremors. There are no more screams. There's no more crackling of fire. All there is is the sound of my gurgling breaths to fill my ears, the taste of acid and copper on my tongue, and the growing understanding of what's happening to me. My eyes water, a small gift that helps ease the burning, but there's a new sensation now making itself known, a tightness in my chest, like iron bands are strapped on my lungs, keeping them from fully expanding. I'm suffocating. Adrenaline surges through me again with the thought, and my mind sharpens, my eyes focus, and I want to scream. No, no, fucking no, I rage. Let me drift, let me fall back into unconsciousness. Let me dream. Don't keep me here. Don't make me stay here alone. I don't want to die alone. Alone? But I'm not alone. My wife is here, and the panic wanes momentarily as my body sways with each stunted breath. Samantha. I want to see her, hold her hand, tell her we're going to be okay, that I'll get us out of this. I try again to turn my head, and again, I fail. Frustration builds, overtaking the panic completely, and a buzzing fills my head. Wait, it's not in my head. It's coming from above me, where my legs are strapped in. I move my eyes in time to catch the sight of my phone screen lit up. It's on the roof of the car. I freeze as I stare down at the call from Richard, and then to the crimson puddle below it. My hands are sunken into the blood that slowly ripples as the occasional drip sounds from my right. No. The phone vibrates again, shivering the blood like a creature from hell preparing to rise, preparing to drown me. No, please. Another vibrate, and I feel the phantom sensation all over. The tingle of the vibration against my skin, the sticky cold of the blood. Were my fingers pruning trapped in that pool? Was I absorbing her death into my body? More bile froths from my mouth, but I don't care this time, not as the missed call log flashes onto the screen, sending Richard's call to voicemail. I stare hard through the blurring pane of the liquid as my screen blinks to my background, making my heart trip in my chest, stealing my breath, giving me the sensation of wanting to cough again and again. But there she is, that blonde hair, that beautiful smile. My Samantha, a hell of a last vision to die by, and my tears flow freely, running into my hair as the screen goes dark, leaving me in that red glow one last time. She's okay, she'll be okay. In the dim light, my eyes adjust slowly as darkness creeps into the edges of my vision, and in the reflection of that black glass, I see her. That crusted, thick, streaked hair, blank eyes clouded in death, her unhinged jaw hanging to the side with the twisted angle of her neck. Noah, I can't even scream. I choke back my fury, my fingers white knuckled on the countertop as she stands on the other side of the island. I'm sorry. She isn't crying. She doesn't sound sorry. She sounds relieved. You're sorry, I repeat and she crosses her arms over her stomach defensively. It just happened, Noah. You shut down on me. You ignored what I was going through and buried yourself in your work. I swallow my nausea. Everyone grieves in their own way. Don't give me that shit. You weren't grieving. 
You weren't even here with me! Her scream explodes out from her, the rage, the hate palpable. I tighten my grip on the counter until my fingers ache. I tried. You! Samantha's voice cuts off, filling the air with thick silence, and then she laughs. laughs. You tried? That's a fucking joke. You're a joke. She pushes away from the counter, grabbing her purse. I'm moving to her before I can stop myself, clamping my hand around her upper arm. I jerk her to stop as she flinches. Are you pregnant? I sneer and take comfort in the way the blood drains from her cheeks at the question. Her palm cracks across my face, temporarily whiting out my vision, stunning me. No, she snarls. You fucking bastard. I'm just screwing Richard in the hopes of getting pregnant. Tinnitus fills my ears as I raise my fist, and I don't feel it when I hit her. I don't hear her shout as she stumbles, tripping over her own two feet, but I see her mouth move, and I see how pretty her blue eyes are as they fill with tears and how quickly her left eye fills with blood as her temple slams against the edge of the countertop and the sharp edge splits the skin on her forehead wide. Noah, let me go! Samantha yanks her arm from my grip and I release her instantly, blinking rapidly to clear the violent vision from my eyes. Sam, don't do this. I plead and she shakes her head. You did this! She backs up into the garage, adjusting her purse on her shoulder. You can't go, I gasp out moving after her. Samantha, you can't take the car. It's my car. My legs are so heavy. I'll call an Uber then. Please, it's three in the morning. Let me take you wherever you want to go. I won't say a word. I won't, just, I have to know you're safe. I slip near the driver's side door, nearly falling, and she gives me a tired look. I won't be. Please, I beg. Fine, but I don't want to talk about this. Her agreement jolts my heart, and I climb into the driver's seat, hitting the garage door opener. I won't say a word. I swear as I pull out into the dark, flicking on my headlights, and she clicks her seatbelt into place, tugging at the strap that's always been too high up on her neck. I'm so sorry. Sam, I'm so sorry. Another jolt has me doubling over as I dig my fingers into my chest, and I hear someone speaking from far away. He sounds so familiar. Noah, slow down! She snaps at me, closing her fingers around the oh-shit handle above the door. I press my foot harder on the brake as we take the curve too fast. Panic seizes me as the car doesn't slow. I'm trying! I try to grip the wheel with both hands, but my body jolts again, seizing my breath in my lungs as a blinding light fills my vision. Noah, there's a car! Noah! Her voice is so far away now, and I hear the squeal of tires coming from in front of me. Slow down! Her scream echoes in my head as the high-pitched whine of the defibrillator charging fills my ears. Fingers brush my cheeks, pulling at my skin gently, and my eyelids open to the too bright room. There are white ceiling tiles above a blurred amalgamation with lights that suddenly dim as a switch clicks to my left. A figure skulks forward before leaning over me. A blue-suited shadow hovers briefly, adding drops to my eyes, then closes my lids again, rubbing them gently. The relief is instant, and I want to thank them, but I can't seem to find the energy to open my mouth. Can you see? Richard asks me as he pulls my lids open again. His blurry form slowly comes into view. I try to nod, but nothing happens, and after a moment, he smiles thinly. I'm afraid you're in rough shape, buddy. The bed sinks as he sits on the edge of it, turning my eyes more toward him as my head rocks, and I notice the breathing tube for the first time at the bottom of my vision. My body shakes with mechanical clicks. With a whoosh of air, the oxygen is forced into my lungs, aggressively expanding my chest, then decompressing it. Why can't I feel it moving? I move my eyes up to the ceiling, and I hear the beeping of a monitor increase above my head as I try to command my arms to move. My legs. Anything. Are you wondering what's happening? Have you figured it out yet? Richard asks, and my eyes dart back to him. He reaches out, tapping the ventilator tube sticking out of my mouth. The tape holding it in pulls at the hair on my face. 
It's called locked in syndrome. You sustained a considerable number of injuries in the crash, but the worst was the clot that lodged itself into your brain. What? A stroke, he clarifies. You've lost the use of your arms and legs and the feeling in most of your body. You can't eat, you can't wipe your own ass. And even if you could breathe on your own, you can't even speak, Noah, he smiles. And my mind struggles to comprehend. Why is he smiling? Why is he telling me this? Where was Samantha? All you have now is your brain, which they tell me seems pretty undamaged otherwise. Thoughts, reason, they all still exist, lucky you. He drawls, patting my cheek. Though they tell me you may struggle with your memory. So I came to fill in the blanks. Richard takes a deep breath, glancing over his shoulder at the closed door. Then his face contorts into revulsion. The anger straining the corner of his eyes shows the silent, feral snarl twisting his lips as he lowers his voice, leaning closer. She wouldn't just leave you. He hisses in my face. I'd been trying for two months to get her to see how much better her life would be if she just left you for me. But she refused. She wouldn't even go out with me until you two gave it another shot. The fight comes back like a wave. My aching hands, her confession that she didn't think she loved me anymore. I'm just screwing Richard in the hopes of getting pregnant, her voice snarls in my mind, and the urge to laugh bubbles up in my throat. The ventilator giving an extra hiss at the slight strain of air that comes out is nothing but that mechanical huff. She was just taking a shot at me. She hadn't been cheating on me. She hadn't been unfaithful. You poor dumb bastard. I smile internally at him. His eyes search mine for a moment before he's mirroring my smile. Are you happy with the news, Noah? That Samantha wasn't ready to choose me yet? I want to nod. I want to shout. I want to punch this fucker in the face. Good. I'm so glad for you. He pats my cheek again, and rage snaps to life in me. Don't fucking touch me. When you crashed the car, her head smashed into the window, fractured her skull. Did you know that? My internal smile dies. The images of her distorted face flash in my mind's eye, and I try to squeeze my eyes closed against the onslaught, but I can't. The seatbelt was also improperly fitted, so her neck snapped, her jaw dislocated, and you'd think she'd have died instantly, but she didn't. While you were hanging there drooling on yourself, her last moments where her life flashed before her eyes was nothing but regret in the pain you caused her. A glint of light catches my eye, and I see his pocket knife in his hand, the way he flips the blade open and closed like a fidget spinner. The thing was, she wasn't supposed to be in the car. You were scheduled to make a rare appearance in the office the next morning, and so I... He hesitates, but I already know. The garage floor, the yellow oil, the brakes not working. He killed her. He... Above me, the monitor chirps out a warning as my heartbeat fills my throat, my head. It's okay, Noah. Shh. Tears flood my eyes as my vision grays at the edges. He got the brakes. He killed her. Standing, he tucks the blade back into his pocket. She was a prisoner, you know. You kept her locked into that marriage. You kept her miserable. His own eyes water as he smiles at me. But don't worry about anything, Noah. I promise I will take care of you from here on out. Since everyone who ever gave a shit about you is dead, I signed up to be your guardian. No, Samantha. No, no. The door opens with a brisk knock, and Richard steps back as a nurse makes her way in. He's a little worked up, understandably, Richard tells her. I just broke the news about Samantha, but we'll work through everything together, buddy, won't we? His smile is vicious over her shoulder before she steps out of view to check my vitals and silence the alarms going off as I choke on my heartbeat, on my rage, and the abject terror that is slowly filling my head with pressure. It's not like you're going anywhere. The walls are closing in as my vision narrows, and the rush of blood roaring through my ears is as close to a scream as I'll ever make again. Thanks for listening. If you enjoy these stories, be sure to subscribe to the podcast and check out some more of my episodes here.